we were here, right? Totally normal and restricted position. And in the next five moves, black has been improving one piece in every turn. And the result is the position that we have here in move 16. Now it looks much better, our pieces are very active. So that's what happens when we play Hippopotamus Defense. Initially we're restricted, but it's a very flexible position. If you like Hippos, this is the right opening for you, since you're going to be hidden and strong and quiet. Just waiting for your opponent to get too close, giving a wrong step. Then you will attack, and it will be too late for him. There won't be way back. It will be over. Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today we are going to learn how to play a very interesting system. This is what we call Hippopotamus Defense. So let me tell you the advantages of playing this opening. Number one, it's not a joke opening unlike what a lot of players think. Uh, Spassky played it twice with a good performance in the World Championship of 1966 versus Petrosian. You know an opening is not a joke when they played it in the World Championship, when they played it for the title of World Champion. So Spassky played it in that championship with a very good performance. He got two draws with black pieces, which is actually what we want when we're in a World Championship with black, and then we try to win with white. Number two. As there is a system, there's no need for theoretical preparation. So when you play a Hippopotamus defense, all you need to know is where your pawns are going to be and where your pieces are going to be. So basically your pawns go to the 6th rank and your pieces go to the 7th rank. And that's all you need to know. Then of course you need to understand the ideas for the mid game and you need to keep in mind what are you going to do then and what's the idea of the system, of course. But basically you don't need to learn or memorize openings or variations or anything. Number three, perfectly works with both black and white. And this advantage is really interesting because if you hate open preparation, learning new openings, preparing against your opponents, uh, lines, etc. Well, this is going to be perfect for you because you can play Hippopotamus uh, defense with both white and black. So it's perfect. It's the only one opening you need if you want uh, to play chess. Just don't worry about the opening play Hippopotamus defense, which you're going to learn here in some minutes. And then you will be able to play it with either white and black and just focus on the middle game, get better in the middle game and the end game and those things. And number four is solid, but also if white over expands just a little bit, there could be a fierce attack. In the opening, we're not doing anything crazy, but usually in the middle game, we can expand a little and we can try some ideas. And also if white gives the wrong step, well, they could be in trouble. It's very easy to make mistakes in positions where they think they are much better. So it's very easy. It's going to happen a lot that they will overexpand. They will give the wrong step and that's where the Hippopotamus will attack. So let's go to the board. So we learn how to play this interesting system. So let's assume white plays knight f3. We can play g6 here. And if they continue with, I don't know, c4, we can play bishop to g7. And after something like d4, we can play d6. Observe that so far we have like a modern uh, defense here. And one of the ideas of this Hippopotamus defense is that it's going to be like a mix between a modern defense and O1 defense. O1 defense is like this. In the opening, we play like b6. And also we play like e6, right? Something like this. And of course, the bishop is coming over the fianche. So we can think of Hippopotamus defense as a mix of both modern and Owen defenses. So after bishop g7, we say d4, d6, right? And then after knight c3, we can play knight d7. And then after e4, now we play e6. And then after bishop e2, we can play something like b6. And this is what we were saying. Now we have the fianche over here, the fianche over there, bishop, bishop, and the two knights are coming in front of the king and the queen. That's why it's a very solid position because you have many pieces guarding your king and queen here. But at the same time, it's going to be flexible because in the middle game, we can expand and we can do things that we're going to talk about it very soon. So for example, if white castles, you can play bishop e7. And then after bishop to e3, you can play here knight to e7. And this is the position that we need pieces on the seventh rank and pawns on the sixth rank here. After, for example, we see two, let's say we can castle. And this is the position we are aiming for for our pieces. So there are some tips and ideas that a hippopotamus defense 
player needs to understand very well, especially for the middle games of the games where we play this line. It's going to be very important to understand these things that I'm going to highlight right now. Number one, if your opponent advances a central pawn, E or D, it's not going to be as strong as it seems. For example, when they move this pawn, they are weakening these squares very often. Well, this time they have a pawn on C4, so not D5, but very often the pawn is not going to be on C4, so also D5 sometimes. But also the bishop is going to be great on the great diagonal, so they are just opening that line. So, in general, when they advance the central pawn, there are two things we can do. One thing is try to take advantage of the better options for your minor pieces, like maneuver with the knights, etc. And the other thing is you can move your central pawn, block the position to expand later with the bishop pawn. So let me show you this uh, with the other central pawn. For example, if they play d5, two different approaches. Try to take advantage of your bishop and your knight's new perspectives, or just block the center and try to expand later over the bishop file with the bishop pawn. So advancing the central pawn is not really as dangerous as it seems. It's going to improve your pieces and it's going to give you the option of blocking and counterattacking with the bishop pawn. Number two, attacks over the rook files are usually not a problem, like I guess with a4 or h4. In general, they are very tempting for white, but they're not really going to create any problem because you can play a6 sometimes ready to block with b5 later. Or also you can block directly with a5. And depending on the position, you can make decisions to stop his counterattack over those files. So the main idea is that if he attacks over the rook files with the pawns, do not ignore this attack. But also keep in mind that it's more easy to repel this kind of attack on the wings. And finally, another thing we need to understand very well is what are we going to do in the mid game, assuming our opponent doesn't expand or doesn't give the wrong step and they don't do anything crazy they just improve the pieces for example like d1 rook d1 normal moves but also quiet moves what do we do if that happens how do we maneuver what kind of moves can we play so i'm going to highlight some ideas that you can play in those situations for example a6 and a6 are moves that we're going to play almost always because we're going to control all the squares on the fifth rank but at the same time we need to highlight that we're controlling Hio and Hio. These squares are very important because they will try things, for example, with knight or bishop very often, or knight over here attacking c7, or the knight Hio attacking e6. So they have ideas using g5 and b5. So very often we're going to try a and h6. And also these moves are going to be very useful if we want to expand later with g5 or b5. These moves are going to be really helpful. So, you know, typical moves for the middle games, a6 and a6. Also, queen e8 is more or less common because there are options for the queen over here and sometimes also over here. But also we should highlight ideas like knight f6 where we are putting pressure in the center. And also, for example, in this position, you're trying to get one bishop. If you get one of the two bishops, then you might have some interesting advantage in the middle game. And finally, we need to keep in mind something very important for a hippopotamus defense player. And it is that we might want to expand and break in the middle game. If your opponent does nothing, that's something we can do. So there are ideas with g5 and f5 that are going to work very well. In general, when you break over here, you're going to improve your bishop, right? You're trying to improve the bishop. And also when you move here, you're improving the knight. And the same thing on the queen side. There are many ideas where you can play b5, trying to undermine this pawn, improving the knight, expanding over here. And also you can play c5, which is undermining the center and trying to improve the bishop on the great diagonal. So you know, for the middle game in Hippopotamus defense game, ideas with g5 and f5 or b5 and c5 are not crazy. Assuming, of course, pawns on a and a6, all these plans are very often very playable. That being said, I think this is a very good moment to take a look at model games where we are playing Hippopotamus defense. So for example, e4, this game black plays g6, after d4, bishop to g7, and then after knight to f3, this move d6. So far we have a modern defense here, after bishop c4, a6, also typical move in modern, wanting to expand over here, very often white castles, and then e6. And here is where we are saying, you know what, I'm going to play Hippopotamus defense here because my knight is coming over there, my bishop is coming over here. 
bishop g5, knight e7, and after queen d2, very often they have ideas with bishop a6, etc. So black played here a6 first. After bishop e3, knight to d7, then after knight c3, b6. Now it's very clear that we have a hippopotamus here hidden on the water. So b6, rook f1, bishop to b7, and this is just a top that we wanted. a4 is not threatening anything. I think it's more like a prophylactic idea, preventing b5 and also b4, attacking the knight, which is the defender of the center. So black plays here knight to f6, more pressure in the center. And this is something we were talking about earlier. Also, we have ideas like knight g4 getting that bishop. That's why in the game, white plays e5. But we already saw that this kind of advances doesn't create any problem for black in general. So this is actually probably a good thing because the bishop is fine. And now we have good ideas for the knights. Uh, this knight can go here and also the other knight can go here or here. So our pieces are going to be very well. Of course, white played this because they saw black king in the center, but they won't be able to take advantage of that. In the game, knight fd5 is very clear. Bishop to f4. Knight takes e3, queen takes e3, and black castles. After e takes e6, c takes e6, queen a3 attacking d6 didn't create any real problem because black found here knight to f5, which defends and also counterattacks in the center. White played c3, and then boom, bishop takes f3. We are losing the bishop on the great diagonal, but it is totally worth because we are going to open the king over there in the castling. So after g takes f3, there is a really interesting move for black in this position. Observe that some white pieces are unprotected, like the bishop on f4 and the bishop on c4. They are both very exposed and not defended. So keeping in mind that also the king is there, discovered, so we can give some checks, it's really dangerous what is happening here with these pieces. So black found the move e5. Very good. And there is that after pawn takes pawn, we can play here pawn takes pawn. And if they accept the pawn, this bishop takes pawn, they are going to lose material. Black can play here bishop takes bishop, rook takes bishop, and then queen shack. Now unprotected pieces are here. And also this one is going to be very easy target. So white plays king h1, and then queen f4, attacking, attacking, and also attacking. So this is getting material for black. That's why after e5, white cannot really accept the pawn hanging in the center, so white just plays here bishop to g3. What happens after bishop g3? Well, expansion with h5, threatening h4. And then after d takes e5, d takes e5. After king h1, they are trying to do something over here. But then queen g5, again we have the ideas of the queen f4 move. They accept the central pawn. And in this position, black won. Probably white can still play a little more, but it's clear that there is decisive advantage for black. We have ideas like h4 here, and it's not easy to deal with that in this position. In the other game, white plays queen spawn, and then after e6, c4, black is playing b6. It's like Canoan's defense, or, well, as we are in a queen spawn this time, maybe we can say some kind of a queen's Indian idea. But after a3, Black plays g6, and then we are saying fianchero here, fianchero here, and knight over here, probably the other knight over here, so it's more or less interesting that we are planning some hippopotamus defense system. After knight c3, bishop g7, after e4, knight e7, and then after knight f3, bishop to b7. Then bishop d3 was played, and then d6, and now it's very clear that our knight is coming over here, white castles knight to d7. In the game, rook e1 was played, and a6 for black. Very typical in this opening. a3 and then a6, also very common. Bishop to e3, and at this point, the player with black found a very interesting idea. And this is one, pawn to g5. Of course, this is a little risky, because we haven't castled yet, and even if we castle later, we are discovering our king with this move. But let's try to understand why it's good. You're controlling the squares over here, but the best thing is that you're improving your knight on e7. It was very restricted, and suddenly it becomes one of your best pieces. 
because the knight is coming to g6. From g6 it can go to h or f4. And the best thing is your queen. Once you move this knight, your queen is much better. So g5, interesting. Risky, but interesting and aggressive. What plays here rook c1? And here we have another move we have talked about in the mid game ideas that we mentioned for Hippopotamus defense positions. And this is one. c5. We want to put pressure here so we can improve our bishop. In the game d5 was played, but now the bishop is great and also the knight is very good. After d5, knight g6 was played. Bishop c2 and they said now there is some pressure here. So there might be ideas with pawn takes, queen takes pawn, for example. So that's why in the game, black plays queen e7, defending that pawn and also linking the rooks later once we castle. After queen d2, there is castling inside here. And then after rook cd1, there is this move, knight d to e5. I want to highlight something very interesting, and it is what we have seen in this media game for Hippopotamus defense. Let's take a look at the position five moves earlier. We were here, right? Totally normal and restricted position. And in the next five moves, black has been improving one piece in every turn. And the result is the position that we have here in move 16. This one. Now it looks much better, our pieces are very active, and this looks really, really interesting now. So that's what happens when we play Hippopotamus defense. Initially we're restricted, but it's a very flexible position, so we can try to expand later if we want. So it's not like we're going to be like that all the game. Our position is solid, but also very flexible. And we're going from here to here. After knight e5, white played here, knight takes e5. Bishop takes e5, and then bishop to d3. And then after queen f6, improving the queen, pressure, pressure, controlling f4. White is going to play knight to a4, which is an interesting move, because there is some kind of weakness on b6, and they are trying to put pressure there. However, black found a very creative way to deal with that pressure. Black plays here, rook a b8. And now the idea is that they want to play some kind of a skewer over here and put pressure on b2. In the game, white accepts the pawn, but, well, here, there are some ideas over here as well. But after bishop c8, we are controlling everything, and also we are taking here and here. In the game, white plays knight a4, but we need to understand that knight takes bishop is not really going to work, as we can play rook takes b2. And then we are taking the queen, and we will get the knight later. Even if they play queen a5 trying to get this pawn, it's not a big deal, you just capture the knight. And if they get the pawn, you double rooks here. This position is actually, surprisingly, decisive advantage for black. And the reason is the activity of the black pieces. Even when white has an extra pawn, black pieces are so active. Look at the rook, the bishop, look at the queen, the pawn controlling these squares. The knight is going to h4. We have everything here. Also the other rook on the open file connected with the rook on b2. All those things are giving you decisive advantage. It's not so easy to see, but let me show you something. If they play a4, you can play ideas like, boom, g4. The whole point is that you want to open some line. You want to create some weakness, so you can actually take advantage of the activity of your pieces. After h takes g4, you can play this move, queen h4. And then there's no way to stop your attack. You're attacking queen h2. This is winning for black. So that's why after bishop c8, white does not accept the bishop and they just play knight a4 here and then well bishop d7 is very clear developing attacking and knight c3 rook b3 you're improving the rook you want to improve the other rook as well and you are putting pressure here of course rook b1 was played rook b8 by black and then knight d1 very passive but trying to defend everything however here e takes d5 was played c takes d5 and then knight a4 the knight really active finally goes ahead. After bishop takes, g takes a4 is a little surprising because with the bishop you're attacking the queen. But the whole point here is that you want to open the g file to bring the rook over there. And if you can do that with your bishop, your queen, the other bishop also extremely active here over the great diagonal. The rook also great and also the pawn can even help at some point. 
the position is very interesting. White plays here bishop to c2, but here there is a brilliant move by black. There is a combination here. Black played the amazing move, rook takes h3. The whole point of this move is that after the capture, you will have this file for your rook, but also this diagonal for your bishop. And the queen is also ready to attack, and the pawn can help a lot on f3. And actually, if you play f3 at some point, the bishop is also great. So all your pieces are going to be extremely active once they accept the rook. In the game, White takes the rook and then king h8 was played. After f3, there is rook g8 shack. In the game, king h1 was played, but you should know that if the king goes to f1, it's not better because we can play queen h4. We have many threats here on h3. Even if they tried this, it's not going to work. You can play bishop takes pawn. And after the king tries to escape, there is a combination here again. We can play the amazing queen takes knight. The king takes the queen and then shack on you 2 and after the king moves you discover because now the bishop is putting the king in shack. And then if the king goes here you give another shack, if the king goes here you're going to get this bishop very soon but we can give a shack first and then we can get the bishop. The king cannot move right so we will have a discovered very soon, we are taking more pawns, we already have two bishops for a rook and also two bishops and a pawn for a rook so it's decisive advantage anyway. So that's why after rook g8, white plays here king h1. But, well, this is game over. Black can play queen h4, we're getting the pawn. The queen cannot come and defend because the rook is hanging on e1. So this position is already winning. It's game over. Even if they try here knight f2, it's not going to work. You just capture here. And this is winning for black. If they take, you take. If they block, you take again. And if they block, you take and mate. So thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any question, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to interact, like, subscribe, check out this video over here. I'm sure you will enjoy it. Keep improving your chess skills and enjoy the game. Play the right move. See you on the next.